Hey, you want to get high, man? Now stimulate your mind. Get up, Chucky! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Hmm, Rojan Kim. Hello. Welcome to the Rojan Kim cast. It's me, Rojan Kim. Thank you so much for joining me today for episode 204. Uh, I am broadcasting from Denver, Colorado. It's a lovely town, Denver is. Um, there was a bit of a hubbub. There's a bit of a hubbub. And by hubbub, I mean the po- possible murder of a man by gunfire. <laughs> Uh, I don't make to, I don't mean to make light of the. Uh, I mean, I guess I do mean to make light of it, um, but not in the way, not like in the Antifa way, where I'm like, yeah, another dead white supremacist, yeah, you know, I don't know. You may have heard the news in Denver. There was a um, Patriot rally, which I think was just a bunch of Republicans and whatnot, Trump supporters. Patriot rally, and then of course there was a counter rally called the Antifa Soup Drive that was put on by the Denver Communists and other, um, I'm sure, wonderful organizations. Um, And, of course, hilarity ensued. And by hilarity, I mean the tragic death of a man. Um, Do I have to look up all their names? Fuck. I I don't want to be like... uh, Fuck it, I am. I'm callous. I don't (laughs) care. Okay, I don't know their names. I don't know. Whatever. The guy died, shouldn't have died. I saw the whole thing. I was there. I was at the... I was a journalist being protected, okay, by the security. And I really thought it was a little out of line that the guy shot him, okay? I'm going to be honest. I know. We hired the guy, but I thought he was vetted. I thought he was vetted. Turns out he's not even a registered security officer, uh, I, I mean, in Colorado, you don't need to register your gun, so I guess there's nothing, you know, I'm sure there's nothing wrong there. In fact, when the cops came, I mean, the cops came instantly, so I don't know if you saw the video. Uh, of course, I'm joking. I'm not the journalist. I was not there. I was in a, I was taking a lovely trip into the mountains that day and came back down and saw the news about what happened. Um, but it's clear, okay, there is a picture of the guy, the the right-wing dude slapping security guy okay and then bears the mace came out and then he shot him but it seems like the order of events is that they got into an altercation he slapped the dude the dude drew his gun the guy maced and then he fired okay and so i think i don't know first of all colorado is so gun friendly when they arrested this guy they found two guns on the scene (laughs) It's just like some random person dropped a gun. I mean, maybe the fucking, uh, the, it remains to be seen if the guy with the mace had a gun, but it doesn't seem like it because when he, only, in the picture, he clearly has a can of mace in his hand and nothing else, uh, you know, um, so he might have been armed, but that's neither here nor there. See, so I kind of got into it on Twitter, as I do, um, which is kind of silly, but I also am pretty entertained by it because I do enjoy arguing with idiots sometimes because it isn't for me about the idiot the other person i'm not going to convince the other person for me it's more of the spectacle of other people watching the discourse and you know fucking choose for yourself and it is of course quite disappointing how many people end up liking (laughs) the other person stuff but that's fine you know whatever I, i don't i'm not trying to be liked i mean i am but i'm not you know what i mean like i don't really at some point, I'm like, this is a lost cause, but I'm just not sleepy, so I'm just going to keep doing this. And then there's nothing, you know, and that's all. I don't really think it's, um, I don't take it to like, you know, remember Kyle's dad in South Park where he just got off on trolling and he was just like, you know, spending hours and hours doing it. You know, I can't put in that much effort. It is just fun, though, to uh, rile people up sometimes. It's just fun. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you got to have fun. You know what I'm saying? We're it's pandemic uh we're all locked down we're not allowed to go work out we're not allowed to go work we're not allowed to do anything so we gotta have fun gotta have fun we're allowed to be virtual we're allowed to get drunk so you know sometimes maybe i'm drunk on twitter and i start arguing (laughs) with people okay that's all i'm allowed to do now that that and, and i guess this until they deem it um i don't know uh harmful or white supremacist until i'm labeled alt-right or whatever it is which is probably coming i keep saying it's coming i feel like you know it's inevitable but at that point it won't mean anything and i'll have missed the whole boat you know i'll get that sweet milo money i won't get that sweet who's is there any asian oh andy no 
money? Is he making lots of, I don't know if he's getting a lot of money. He seems to be out in the front lines. I don't know how much money that guy's making. People call him a grifter. People call everybody who does anything well a grifter. Anybody who is like Andy No got to go on Joe Rogan. It's called a grifter. I hear people calling Jimmy Dore a grifter because he has a successful uh, like show and podcast that's independent. You know, he has a subscrip- uh, subscriber-based thing going on. So, of course, he's a grifter, right? Aaron J. Monte, progressive journalist, um, also labeled a grifter <laughs> just because he's a successful journalist. And by success, he's not like not rich or like Rachel Maddow, who has like a $2.5 million apartment for sale in Manhattan or some shit. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, a successful journalist as in someone who is still doing what real journalism seems to be. This idea of real journalism. What is that? Real journalism. Real comedy. You hear that? Real American. Like, what does any of that mean? <clears throat> this idea of reality. What does reality even mean anymore when everything is just virtual? Everything is data driven. Everything is like algorithmic. You know what I mean? There's computers behind everything that's that is being pushed at as content wise. Uh, data analysis, people analyzing demographics. Uh, clicks, likes, views, all this behavior. It's all aggregating and the algorithm spitting out like this is what they might like based on past behavior and so on and so forth. And all of social media is driven that way. Advertising is driven that way. Programming on television and fucking streaming. It's all driven that way. It's all algorithmic. You know what I mean? It's all based on our patterns, behavior. They're looking, they're tracing your eyeball as you look at your phone to see where you're looking and they're compiling all that data, you know, so that the next time they can make sure they can make an ad that's fucking perfect for your eyeballs. You know what I'm saying? Your eyeball is going to go right there, just fucking right there. Um, That's what they're all about. I mean, you're probably just learning from porn ads, you know what I'm saying? Because porn ads, I don't know if you've ever gone to a pornography website, um, but there will, there will be ads for revenue, you know, because all the porn's free now, so they have to make revenue somehow. And so they have to create these ads that distract you from porn. So they have to be even more sort of disgusting and vile. I mean, it kind of has to go there in order for the eye to move over. You know what I mean? Because dudes are you know we have a hunter brain you got that hunter brain so we just focus in try not to get distracted by the ads you know to focus in maybe you go full screen sure maybe but who's got the time you know what i'm saying and then they have to make these ads that are just just scream just winking buttholes just gaping holes just lots of holes and hole based advertising you know what i'm saying a lot of stretching collapsing holes um just a lot of holes um and that's what it takes to get eyeballs, holes, um, at least maybe for men. Uh, I don't know about women. I'm sure there may be a difference in the way women perceive advertising or perceive um, like stimulus in general. I guess by saying that, though, am I transphobic? I think I'm just I've now become transphobic by asserting that there are biological bases to sex. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, I just, I just don't care anymore. I mean, if anything, it could be a little bump for the career, you know? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of don't want to be virtuous. You know, when I voted for Obama twice, I, I felt that, you know, this, I was doing a virtuous act. I was doing something that, um, you know, like I, I was doing good, you know? I was doing like a good thing. And I'm on the side of good, and I believe in morality. You know, I hated the wars and Bush and what we were doing. We were torturing people. You know, I hated all of that. And I was like, dude, this guy's going to come... He's going to come and fucking uh, change. He gave me the hope. He gave me the change. Uh, and instead of the hope and change I thought uh, he was going to bring, what he ended up changing was uh, two wars to seven. That's what he did. <laughs> That's what he did. He changed it from two wars to seven, and he changed it so that where I hope that there isn't another terrorist attack because now we're at war in so many other countries. Um And I realized, I think, after Obama, into Trump, that's why I didn't even vote for president in 2016. I was like, fuck it, I can't vote. The office of the president is over. It's not, it's a farce, okay? It's not only a farce, it's sort of a, a, I feel like it's a distraction. It's a way you kind of, like, distract everybody, the people, the populace. Even now, we're all, it's all Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump. Meanwhile, there's an entire 
machinery, I mean, whatever you want to call it, military industrial complex, the Mickey mat, fucking, you know, the deep state, whatever it is you want to call it, is this whole engine running behind them that the president is really just a steward and figurehead for, but ultimately not the shot caller. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately not a king or an emperor of any sort. The president is more beholden to these forces than anybody else, I'm sure. I mean, I think JFK was a lesson to that, right? JFK was like, we have to stop the wall. And then you get back into the left. There you go. And maybe that's what's happened to us. We've regressed back and to the left. Not really. We had the whole Reagan thing. That doesn't, I guess, maybe now we're back into the left. Okay, I'm trying to make this back into the left thing happen, just like Oliver Stone did in JFK. And I don't know if you're convinced. But I came across this um, thing from Double Down News. It's Double Down News on Twitter. David Graeber on ex- on the extreme center. What kind of politics we have now, where the left is represented by this kind of Obama Macron style centrism, where you're both for the market and for bureaucracy at the same time, you know, is kind of horrible, right? The only possible appeal of that kind of politics is, well, at least they're not Nazis, right? So, so what they want is the left to be this kind of mishmash of bureaucratic market centrism and the right to be outright fascist. To set the ball rolling in an actual left direction will make that centrism look like utterly unappealing. In France, sometimes they talk about the extreme center, and I think that's a fitting phrase. It strikes me that what's called the moderates are the most immoderate people possible. And the reason why they're so uncompromising, I think, is because they realize they don't have a lot of positive arguments. They're not really for anything. I mean, somebody like Obama, the reason he worked was because he looked like the kind of guy who would have a vision. He acted like a visionary. He had the intonation. He had the way of standing and looking into the distance like he really believed in something. And it shows you something about just how much visionary politics has been killed. It didn't even seem to occur to people to ask what his vision actually was, right? Because it turns out, insofar as he had a vision, his vision was not to have a vision. You know, he believed in pragmatism and compromise and so forth. And that's what the, the center has been reduced to. It's become this pure set of performative symbols. And at the same time, you get to feel morally superior, which is ultimately what centrism, what liberal centrism is all about, is the ability to feel feel better than other people. So there is a kind of a symbiosis whereby the right wing pretend to be stupid, like George Bush II sort of perfected this, like I'll act like a yokel, all of the liberals will make fun of me as an idiot, everybody who resents the sort of cultural elite for having monopolized all the good jobs will look at them sneering at me and say, yeah, I bet those guys feel the same way about me as they feel about Bush, I'll vote for Bush, ha ha ha, stick it to them, right? You know, that shtick, Trump is just doing it in a more extreme version of the same thing, Johnson's doing the same thing. You know, you act like an idiot, the people who are um, the sort of educated elite make fun of you and it works. Now, who's the, really the idiot, right? People keep falling for the same stupid trick over and over and over again. So there's a symbiotic relationship between these centrists who are just sort of sneering elitists and these guys who are the scam artists who pretend to be yokels, who pretend to be idiots, or pretend to be fascists. They're not even real fascists. They're kind of phony fascists. They are trying to set up a situation where those are the only two viable political choices because they both feed off and complement one another that was david graber immediately after that it said david graber uh 1961 to 2020 in loving memory so they may have maybe they murdered him after that dude i don't know they fucking kill him um but i gotta look into more about this guy i i feel like he's somebody i should know more because he's saying a lot of shit that i i talk about all the time and maybe i just now people will say i ripped him off i you know no i'm just kidding I, i don't really believe that in original thoughts anymore. Um, you know, if we were all, uh, do you think I speak English naturally? My parents spoke Korean. I mean, if they spoke to me, they would have spoken Korean. I was largely neglected, so I was, I was raised by television, which is why I speak like this, why I speak like this. Um, but I digress. Dave Graber, okay, so great points there, right? We have this form of centrism that's basically like, uh, yay, market, yay, bureaucracy, <laughs> like what? And it's, uh, uh, this is, elitism right this sort of elitism that becomes performative look at nancy pelosi with a ripping of the thing and her clapping yet at the same time she passed 
Trump's military budget. I say this almost every episode. She passed Trump's entire legislative agenda. Okay, like I know, I know, I've said it a bunch of times, but isn't that the kind of hypocrisy that is glaring? Then shouldn't it just tell you that the fucking the machine is behind all of it? And that's what, of course, David Graeber's kind of. He's not saying that specifically, but what he is saying is that the centrists are basically you know, who I would say are the caretakers of the status quo, the military industrial complex are basically split into two sort of factions, right? You got this neoliberal kind of like uh, corporate, but I guess morally superior and intellectual and media controlling class. You know what I mean? That the, the demo, what we would call the Democrats and I guess the li- liberals in other countries. Um, and then you have this sort of faux populist right that is like not really populist and not really even fascist like that's the whole thing it's like they're not even that great of uh, fascists what kind of fucking fascists believe in uh big government and fucking taxing you know what i mean what kind of fascists fucking you know are lockstep in fucking with, uh, with corporate attitudes you know what i mean what kind of fascists are fucking i don't know they're not like there's people say like there's this fascist uprising fascists but like people being put in cages people put in put in jail oh yeah you mean like the drug war you mean like how people have been put in jail for marijuana which is not even a criminal offense and just being put away for life for three strikes laws passed by joe biden you know like that oh is, is, that sounds kind of fascist to me i mean if you were, if you were gonna really talk about fascism in america it seems like take it all the way back to um you know uh state sponsored white supremacy back in the day you know fucking from slavery to the slave laws to the fucking jim crow to this and that and this is fucking onward and onward right fucking segregation all of it again the genocide of native americans all the stuff that the leftists the so-called leftists the sort of uh you know what they're going on about it really did happen okay i mean it's not to say that it didn't happen right this shit really happened so i would say that that's when if we're gonna say it's fascist that's when it was fascist and it's either gotten better or it's the same or it's a more insidious form of it okay maybe that's what it is you know but in in any case it isn't that trump is the fascist that brought it like what kind of fucking retard fascist is he (laughs) He hasn't well you know what i mean like why can't he just do stuff why can't he just why does it take him I mean, sure, he got his whole legislative agenda passed by, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi, but why can't he pull out of Afghanistan? Every time he tries to pull out of Afghanistan, something happens. Somebody dies or fucking the Russian bounty story comes out. You know, it's like then we got it. Then they decide to pass the NDAA with a stipulation that we got to stay in Afghanistan unless there's complete and total uh, victory. Like the conditions for victory in Afghanistan are now that like the Taliban has to completely surrender, which they'll never do and nobody even wants. Okay, so it's never going to happen. Right. So why? What kind of fascist is that? You know what I mean? Hitler was such a fat. Now that's a fat Hitler fucking made a pact with the Soviet Union. And everybody's like, phew, we don't need to fight a two front war. We can fucking we're kicking the West's ass right now. And we're murdering all these Jews. Dude, we are doing great. And then Hitler turned around and said, you know what? We're attacking the Soviets. And all of his generals were like, "Nah, you can't. And he just murdered whoever said no. That's a fascist. Now that's a fascist. Now that's a fascist, and some people are even, you know, I had a professor here, I don't know, this might be controversial, but I had a professor in Berkeley who, uh, Anton Greger, that was his name, and he was a preeminent scholar on 20th century revolutions, and uh, his contention was that Nazi Germany wasn't even truly fascist, okay? It wasn't fascist, fascist, because it wasn't actually nationalist, because they were expansionist, they didn't. They weren't about protecting their borders. They were about expanding their borders as much as possible. And it wasn't socialist by any stretch. And uh, if anything, it was sort of a race-based, totalitarian, expansionist uh, regime. You know what I mean? Like, it was racial. It wasn't really based on the nation. It wasn't based on the nation. They exterminated the most productive members of their nation. You know what I mean? It wasn't about it. It was about something about racial purity, something that, like, uh, a lot of like Mussolini, he told me about this, um, this like journal entry from Mussolini. It was like, yeah, Hitler came over today and he just wouldn't stop going on about the Jews. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, fine. I'll get rid of the Jews. You know what I mean? Like for a lot of the people that negotiated with Hitler or were allies with Hitler, 
they were just like the guy's obsessed with shoes. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're just like, okay, whatever, man. Like you know, it's geopolitical for most everybody else, but for Hitler, it really, you know, it was this conceptual thing. The guy was an artist. Okay, let's just. <laughs> I just take it. I don't mean that it's like a good thing or bad. I mean, he literally was an artist. Like he was a painter, and then they rejected him from that school, and they probably should have accepted him. But if they did, there'd be no Israel. So there you go. Um, and then, uh, you know, that that's what he did. But I'm just saying, you you want to talk about like a right wing dictator? You know, somebody who got things done. Now that's a guy who got things done. I, Trump is not getting things done. He do, he do, I mean, he says he is, but what is he? he what is he getting done? Right, he's not pulling us out of the wars. He isn't fucking, you know. He's a, the rich are still rich. The taxes, the taxes are all going to them. Like you know. Anyway, um, so there you have it. The extreme center. I kind of agree with that sentiment. I, I think, um, like it makes sense, right? I mean, it's exactly what's going on. And that's why I think you know this whole thing of everything being a KFAB and all of that. Like it all makes sense, right? There's really just a center that's creating a mock conflict to make it look like there's actually two sides when really what it is is just two types of republicans that's that's what we got so you know there you go and speaking of the center um bill burr's snl monologue now that was a big thing i I watched it i liked it i thought it was funny i mean he had funny joke good jokes i like the rick moran joke i like the the white woman stuff i always love making fun of white women and hilarious uh, especially the you know the that they were in on it it was a version of dave Chappelle's you was in on the heist but you just didn't like your cut right like the, this whole idea of like they rolled around in the blood money <laughs> and now they're taking a moral position like how did the white woman become woke that's you know great i think that's if anything what bill burr showed us is that the entire country can unite around uh despising woke white women I think we can all agree that that's what we can unite behind, and that's great. I think, you know, it takes a man, it takes a man, ladies, <laughs> it takes a man like that to sometimes bring us together, right? <clears throat> of course, I will say that um, on some levels, that is sort of the most acceptable edgy you could be nowadays. You know what I mean? Like if he went full on out and just was like, there's no white supremacy anymore. <laughs> I'm married to a black woman. <laughs> like, if he did that, that would have gotten him canceled, right? He'd just be outright canceled. But what he did is he took, it's an interesting, it's like the leftist, it's like the leftist position without going all the way with the white people. You know what I mean? It's like kind of sticking with the black people and being like, all right, yeah, if I can take your talking to like me, you know, if I can take it. But that's, of course, because he is married to a black woman. I'm sure he's had us talking to. <laughs> I'm, sure <he's> had, <laughs> I'm sure he's had plenty of fights <laughs> I can only imagine the fights Bill Burr and Neil Long had when, you know, they were at the beginnings of the relationship and Bill Burr didn't know that much about, I mean, what he knew about black people was just performing for them and his friends, but then she probably added a perspective that made him go, ah, you know, especially now that he has a daughter who's probably going to look black, you know, like he's, he, you know, that makes you very conscious, you know, and so I do, uh, were friends of mine calling Bill Burr a faggot? Yes, they were calling <laughs> Especially after he went on Rogan, went on about the mask thing, especially. But you know, I felt like he kind of worked that out in the joke, in the monologue. You know, he was like, "This is a dream come true." The, you know, he was like, "That he," because it is. He is the guy who's advocating for people to die. And then, is it hypocritical for him in casual conversation to be like, "Masks, we should wear a mask" or whatever? I don't know. I that's only if you think comedy is literal. Right, like everything you say on stage is actually what you believe off stage, and then so you can't ever say anything that contradicts that. I mean, that seems kind of extreme, kind of a bit much. But that is, you know, that's where we are. That's where we are in terms of lack of nuance. So I do, I I liked Bill Burr's monologue. I do feel that you know it, it wasn't edgy uh, in any by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think he really. It's pretty safe, I think, to go after white women, even though. Uh, it is very dangerous to anger white women, as you can see, Hillary from 2016, <laughs> as you can see, uh, you know, from the damage that white women have wrought since uh, the 19th Amendment was passed, passed and suffrage was allowed, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, the 19th Amendment was passed in 1919, and what has followed is a century of death and destruction, right? That's, and that's, you know, what are you going to do? Two atomic bombs, you know, two. <laughs> Thanks a lot, ladies. Anyways. On the tail of this SNL monologue, I got blocked. I got blocked. It, another blocking, block report 
Um, yeah, I love, I kind of revel in getting blocked. I don't know. So, you know, maybe this is, it's for the best, but, um, so comedian Kate Willett, Kate Willett was a, um, <clears throat> or was, I mean, she's a comic. She's fucking with that dude, Jake Flores, who ate his own jizz and goes after the Legion of Skanks all the time. And he's like, says he's Antifa or whatever, but he's just kind of like, I've seen him do stand up, man. He sucks. Kate Willett, I've seen do stand up. She's actually funny, but then I think her politics got in her way. She became like this political darling, and I think that kind of like uh, made her like, now she's like, I don't know. She went on a compound media, and then they started making all these jokes. They're like, like, I don't know. Fucking. I'm trying to remember what the joke was. It was something about Pocahontas and dressing up as Native American, and then she was like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm out of here, and she just walked out of the show, which is a no, no, I don't even, you shouldn't do that as a comic. No comic will respect you. And then this whole thing, they started saying she should get ra- raped with a railroad spike, which I can understand why it'd be uh, scary. But at the same time, it's just, come on, it's fucking, be, be a comic, be a comic. You can't, I just don't understand how you can be a comic and then draw these lines, you know? And it, a lot of people do, it, I don't know. So it looks, listen to what she said here. This is Kate Willett's tweet. She said, Bill Burr is a great comic with incredible, well-crafted jokes, and my personal view is that the people most served by pearl-clutching about jokes are the people who want to launder real right-wing extremism through the idea of, quote, jokes that are actually not jokes at all. Okay, so that's a fucking word salad, right? Let's try to unpack what she's saying here. First, she's saying she likes Bill Burr, so she doesn't want to get in the camp of saying, I don't like Bill Burr. Right? She wants to be on the right side there. She just said, Bill Burr's a great, well-crafted jokes. Okay. And, and my personal view, okay, here we go. I guess as if we didn't already know her tweet was her personal view, is that the people most served, so the people who benefit by pearl clutching about jokes. Okay, so the people who benefit by people going, oh, oh no, jokes, are the people who want to launder real right-wing extremism through the idea of jokes that are actually not jokes at all that what a completely redundant sentence okay so let's try to unpack this okay people most served by pearl clutching about jokes okay the people who benefit the most by people getting offended by jokes are the people who want to launder Real right-wing extremism. So let's, what the fuck does that mean? Launder, like launder money. So it's like uh, secretly passing things off, cleaning things, right? So uh, real right-wing extremism. So I'm assuming that's just racism. I don't know what that means, right-wing extremism. Like people using Nazi thoughts or something, like Nazi ideas. Okay, Nazi ideas through jokes. <clears throat> All right, so here we go again. All right, let's try to do it again. So the people most served by pearl clutching about jokes, so the people who benefit the most by people being offended are people who want to sneak Nazi thoughts through jokes that aren't jokes. Holy shit. What? All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's, try to... <laughs> Let's try to unpack this again. <sighs> so the people most served, the people who benefit, by pearl clutching about jokes. So the people who benefit from being offended by jokes are the people, so the people so the people who benefit from being offended are the same people who want to disguise Nazi thoughts as jokes. Okay, so that's somebody like, ah, would it be funny if we killed all the Jews? Ha ha ha. But what they're really doing is cryptically sneaking in Real, like, yes, let's kill the Jews. It, it, you know, because the laughs go, ha, ha, ha. You go, ha, ha, ha. And then while you go, ha, 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 they, yes, let's kill the Jews. Come to get sn- snuck in. You know what I mean? Like, somebody is like, wouldn't it be hilarious if we kill the Jews? Ha, ha, ha. And then while you go, ha, 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 it's like, no, I'm serious. Let's really kill them. Is what happened. Is it, That's her contention. What a fucking batshit insane. First of all, this fucking sentence she wrote is crazy. Right. What the fa- First of all, what does it have to even do with Bill Burr? Okay, because oh, because white ladies got offended by Bill Burr. So let's just break this down even more. Who got offended by Bill Burr? Mostly white ladies, because that's who we went after, right? And white men, white men who are white knighting for the white ladies. So, so those people who get offended, 
those people, they are serving the people who are secret Nazis. So somehow the people, okay, I think what she's trying to say is that like the people who fucking get offended at jokes are making people side with the secret Nazis. That's what she's saying. That's what she's saying, which is fucking r- ridiculous because she's the one who gets offended by jokes. <laughs> by her own logic, she is helping crypto fascists because she pearl clutches about jokes, right? She's the one who fucking, she got offended by the Pocahontas thing. You know, she got offended by the getting raped by a railroad spike thing, which, I mean, it's uh, Chrissy Mare acquaintance not friend uh, but we started open micing i remember just being at first open mics with her chrissy mare who is now uh doing great on compound media she dressed as a railroad spike <laughs> for halloween they triggering kate even more and then of course the compound fans are like kumia fans and stuff you know anthony and kumia and uh yeah let's just say they're kind of a little bit more mm, possibly republicans but a little you know edgier a little more whatever they're like the fucking skanks right like um <sighs> i'm okay i'm gonna try to see if i can find this clip Okay, I found the clip. Here we go. This is Kate Willett on Compound Media. Morning. It's called The Morning Show. This is her walking away. If you ask her what we are, we're 100% Italian. Because as far back as she can remember, her Nona and her Nona's Nona told her we were Italian, which they know. But when you fucking get into the semen of it all, large, what's the two <laughs> words? Yo, Garrett, what's the two words I'm looking for when I describe semen? What's Landloads. Semen? Thank you. When you get into the logic of it all and you trace back to the semen that you're, or saliva you're sending, the DNA, you go back millennial. And you'll find, like, oh, my God, you're a part fucking caucus mountain jew what does this have to do with halloween costumes i'm sorry Gino. i'm gonna go i really don't feel comfortable i seriously gino like, I'm just... you need to apologize no no he does I, no I, I, I don't i just i'm really not cool with some of the stuff that just got said right now and it's just okay make sure you google are you serious hey i am so <laughs> sorry gino a formal written apology will be going to will... later have a good one kate <laughs> Don't let me catch you talking to Jews. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was Gino Bisconte, comedian. Hey, he's pretty funny, man. Uh, he, he was just talking about Halloween costumes and just making some point about ethnicity. And if you go through your DNA, you'll find out that you'll, you know, whatever. You'll fucking find other people in there. And, of course, that made Kate Willett uncomfortable. And she's like, I'm sorry, I just can't. And that was at 2018. I'm sorry, I just can't. And I just I just can't. I just can't. And then she just walks out. And then everybody's like, what the fuck? And then it was after that people started harassing her about being raped by a railroad spike. Which some may, be, may say, whoa, whoa, that's too far. But I would say it's not. Okay? I'm saying it's not. You know why? Because I think in that moment she showed that she was not a comic. Okay? She showed that she thought she required some kind of special protection. And she also was morally superior than them. Also, San Francisco comic. And I don't know what it is about San Francisco comics, but they are so fucking smug and superior. And they have such chips on their shoulders. And all they ever wanted to do is move to New York, which Kate finally did. God bless her. So she could be with Jake Flores. Good for her. Um, and that's just fucking just get over it they have such inferiority complexes about fucking new york and about not being smart enough and not be and there she is and she's fucking getting triggered right so there she was she was the one pearl clutching about jokes so what she is doing is serving the people who want to launder real right-wing extremism through the idea of jokes which i suppose is what she's saying gino gino bisconte what he was saying there with you know whatever his tirade was about halloween costumes and dna uh th- what he was really doing is slipping in white supremacist crypto white supremacist talk that's what it was even though it wasn't he had nothing to you, you know what i'm saying uh anyways i retweeted that tweet with a laugh emoji with a little laughing emoji like a cry laugh emoji and then she blocked me <laughs> And I feel like it kind of proves her own point. It's actually so funny how much it proves her own point. Like, she's the one pearl clutching. She's the one pearl clutching. Anyways. um, So, yeah. Adventures on Twitter. Adventures in Denver. Um, Guys getting shot. Me having uh, arguments with on Twitter retards. Do, wait, did I talk about this? I might be getting confused because uh, I did. 
I did start a podcast and then stop it because it was lame. And so, anyways, there was a shooting in Denver, right? It was uh, a guy who was a private security, shot him. And um, so I started thinking about, like, self-defense, right? Because there's, like, self-defense and there's lethal self-defense. And I think about this a lot because I know jujitsu, And I always wonder, like, you know, I've heard of people getting in trouble for using martial arts to subdue people attacking them. You know, and it depend really depends on the the country or the fucking town or city or state even like wherever you are there are certain laws some states are stand your ground laws colorado is a standard ground law you're allowed to stand your ground if you're being attacked and use lethal force okay california on the other hand is a duty to retreat place you have a duty to retreat if someone is attacking you you have a duty to retreat and if you attack them back you get fucked up okay so that's you know laws are crazy in that way so here in denver the guy you know he was smacked by a right wing dude and then bam immediately pulls out a weapon shoots the dude dead okay i got into it on twitter about whether this was justified is it justified to kill someone who slapped you and sprayed you with pepper spray now here's the thing i just talked about compound media and kate willett anthony nakumia got kicked off of opie and anthony remember big old show o and a off of Sirius. He got kicked off of Sirius because he was in Times Square in the middle of the night taking pictures because he's a photo bug, right? He was taking pictures and then he got assaulted by this black lady, by a black lady. And he <laughs> tweeted, he was tweeting while he was being assaulted. And he may have said, he didn't actually say anything racist. He didn't say anything racist at all. I mean, the only thing he did say was just about the problem of black violence or whatever. And so I guess if you're like, that guy is racist, then you could perceive everything he says after that to be racist. But here's the thing. That lady was slapping him. He was being physically assaulted by this woman. He was live tweeting it, and he had a gun on him. Anthony Cumia is a gun nut, let's just say. It's probably not a stretch uh, to say he's a gun nut when there's video of him holding fucking uh, M16s and fucking singing karaoke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> probably not. You know, he loves his guns. He's got a concealed carry permit because he has been, you know, there's been death threats and stuff against him. He was being assaulted by this woman, and she even called for two other dudes to help. And you know, and he ex- extricated himself without pulling his weapon, without shoot having to shoot anybody, because he knew his life wasn't in danger, even though she was slapping him. And maybe if it was a man, it might have been different. You know, maybe whatever. If it was a big man, it might have been different. He might have felt different. The whole point that I'm trying to make here is that he had it in his mind to understand that. This was not a self. It wasn't a self-defense situation that required lethal force. Okay, so then looking at this Denver thing, I'm really up in the air about whether they're going to charge this guy with murder or not. You know, was it justified self-defense? Um, was he struck? Yes, he was struck, but then he was a distance away when he pulled his weapon. When he pulled his weapon, he was a distance away. The other guy maced. The mace may or may not have hit the guy. But the gun definitely did hit the guy, you know what I mean? And part of the arguments people were saying was like, well, he didn't know if that dude had a gun. And if the mace had hit him in the face, he might have fucking, you know, been attacked. And what about other people? What if they have a gun? But it's just like, okay, so he's justified in using lethal force because of the fact that the guy might have had a gun. But then doesn't that mean that anybody could have shot the guy with the gun because they know he has a gun? You know what I'm saying? Like that logic doesn't, you can't just shoot people because you think they're going to do something. Yeah, there has to be a reasonable imminent threat, right? There has to be a real imminent threat. So I, I'm i going to be curious to see how this thing pans out, you know, because you have, of course, uh, everything is polarized. Everybody's going to say this is Antifa versus, uh, you know, the f- Patriots or whatever, Antifa versus the Boog Boys. Eh, not even. It's Antifa, you know, it's like Trumpists, Trumpers versus uh, commies or whatever. You know, d- a lot of people are talking about the possibilities of a second civil war, Civil War II, electric boogaloo. And that's, I don't know if you know about that boogaloo, boog movement, but um, it's just sort of, some people paint them as Nazis. I don't really, I, from what I've gathered, they're not, they're more like libertarian gun nuts, but also like memes, memers who are kind of making fun of everything by wearing Hawaiian shirts and walking around with uh, fucking, you know, AR-15s and shit and acting like there's a second civil war. And some of them want a second civil war and some of them are just like cosplaying a second civil war. And and that's because the boogaloos aren't really, um, I don't know, there's no organization I don't really see, I mean, there's just, I think it's less organized than Antifa, really. I mean, I, I think Antifa is more than an idea, obviously. There was a, um, 
fuck it you know obviously there was like uh some kind of uh i don't know it was just <laughs> i mean obviously there are organizations that consider themselves anti-fascists, okay? Just like there are organizations that probably consider themselves white supremacists or organizations that consider themselves libertarians or gun nuts or whatever. One of my favorite um, libertarian gun advocates is a man named Maj Touré, who is, he's black, if that matters to you. But um, one of the things that happened at the shooting in Denver was the guy who, with the mace, got into it with this other guy who had a Black Guns Matter shirt. And they got into it a lot. There, it was like really like hostile. And he was like, uh, "Fucking see what happens, man. See what happens. You know, fuck you. You know, whatever." Um, I don't know. I think if anything, that could have been controlled opposition. Here's the thing: like Maj Touré is not a leftist. Like Black Guns Matter is not a leftist. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not. It does not align itself. It's actually. It's more libertarian. You know, and I don't know where you put libertarian. Is that right wing, left wing, whatever? Um, and it's more of pro Second Amendment for black people, which I'm all for. You know, I think that's the whole point of gun control is because of the Black Panthers. So I think, you know, if I can let everybody, I mean, I, I'm for everybody having one. Fuck it. Every, I'm not a gun nut. Like, I don't think every, but I just feel that, you know, hey, listen, there's a monopoly in violence, okay? And if you really believe there is a Nazi uprising happening, don't you want to be uh, armed? I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not calling for any kind of armed revolution or armed anything, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? If you really do feel that the forces of fascism are taking over in this country, then I, what are you, are you just going to hope for the best? Eh, okay. Well, am I ending this with a call to violence? I'm not, I'm not calling to violence. That's the thing. I don't, I'm not a violent person i think the violence that's going on right now is the centrism okay the status quo the seven wars we're doing right the fucking drug war the fucking military the prison all the industrial complexes you know what i mean and the fucking corporate media's um basic like collusion with all of it when has the news ever told us how bad the wars are huh when has the news ever showed us the starving yemeni children that are dying because of us because of the blockades because of the weapons we sell the saudis you know what who's no one's telling us about any of that except me no i'm just kidding a lot of people are but not mainstream you know what i'm saying so here we are off the mainstream um so i guess that's about it i mean you know life is going to continue life is not bad um is it a crazy time yeah it's a crazy time but hey at least there aren't real Nazis. Remember when the real Nazis were going on? That was a crazy time, too. I mean, you know, when they nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Korea was under Japanese rule for over 30 years. That was a crazy time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was lots of crazy time. McCarthyism, whew, that was crazy, right? Back in the 70s, with the 70s, with the economic downturn. and the like, Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um... Anyways, so it's all crazy. And at the same time, yeah, sure, it's crazy now. It's crazy now, and it's always been crazy, and it's a crazy time for everybody. Yeah, it's so crazy, yeah. <sighs> if it's always crazy, is it crazy at all? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yeah, maybe that's that's the whole thing. It's that we are living in one of the best times in history, even though there's a lot of craziness, but we kind of have the privilege of that kind of craziness. You know why? Because other people, you know what they're dealing with? They're dealing with uh, the their money fluctuating so much that you have to come in with a ticket uh, to lock down the price of just like, like bread will go from $5 to $10 within the time you're in the store, okay? So that's good. I mean, I'm glad we don't do that. I'm glad there aren't people being dragged into the streets and murdered everywhere. Like, I mean, that's good. Uh, I'm glad we're not fighting war in our streets, you know, that there's a gunfire everywhere. I mean, it could have, all of this could happen at any moment very quickly. It could all devolve very, very quickly. That's the thing. I mean, I suppose that's the thing. Um, so we just, you know, we hope and we pray. We hope and we pray that this extreme center is actually doing its job to keep things stable. Maybe we need to be at war in seven countries in order to make sure shit doesn't pop off here. I don't know. On the other hand, maybe that's the reason why things will pop off here. I don't know. I'll try to ask Kate Willett, but she blocked me. Um, she blocked me, and I don't know how comfortable she would be having a conversation about um, the wars 
I mean, I don't, I'm sure she's against them, but she also is voting for Biden, you know, so whatever. I don't. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to the Rojan Kim cast. Um, you can please, 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 please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, on the Spotify, Google and Apple and all of that. Thank you so much. Um, until next time, goodbye.